You want to talk about fake meat? Sure. Well, you want to talk about the boners? You, you sure, know. let's talk about the boners. <laughs> Recently, Chris Kresser was on the Joe Rogan podcast to debunk the Game Changers movie. The Game Changers being the most recent vegan propaganda piece featuring stars such as Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was actually handing out turkeys for Thanksgiving. Arnold Schwarzenegger carried on an annual tradition today. He was on hand at the Hollenbeck Youth Center in Boyle Heights to help give out turkey. And the movie was produced by James Cameron. Chris Kresser is a very successful functional medicine practitioner, and I personally believe he is one of the best at doing so on the planet. If you have a health issue and need to fix it, this is your guy. That being said, the whole conversation was half-assed. You know, it debunked aspects of the movie, which I did in my own critique as well, but it didn't touch on practical solutions and ignored key issues. What is the point of all this if you're not going to explain why the vegan diet is actually bad and what to do alternatively, specifically from a nutrient perspective? You know, what nutrients are missing on a vegan diet? What are the potential inflammatory components? Unfortunately, the importance of fat-soluble vitamins was not emphasized. You know, the need for cholesterol, the different types of mineral chelations in animal versus plant foods. They did mention the amino acid profile of animal protein, but didn't elaborate on the context of absorption in the array cycle and the Krebs cycle. You know, the USRDA was brought up, the United States recommended dietary allowances, the amount of nutrients needed to prevent nutritional deficiencies in 97.5% of the population. Neither Chris or Joe knew this, and to not address that the RDAs aren't correct, you know, from the error in vitamin D3 research to the lack of acknowledgement of the vitamin form, you know, as well as mineral chelation is very rudimentary. You know, Joe specifically said himself in this podcast. And you see it almost every time someone who's actually informed has a conversation with one of these influencers. Like, they're not being 100% accurate, objective, or even honest in a lot of cases. But they're doing the exact same thing. They did, however, talk about conventional agriculture, touching on the moral arguments saying there are animals killed in monocrops, you know, debunking the vegan moral aspect fairly well, you know, referring to these feedlot operations as industrial GMO monocrops. Uh, Chris debunked the environmental impact of meat, but I don't think anyone would dare say the truth about climate change. You know, getting people to educate themselves on the sun cycles, water vapor. It seems like a lot of people in the carnivore movement are saying, oh, grass-fed beef, Ruminant animals are good for the environment if grazed properly on pasture, but they're ignoring that climate change isn't the actual issue in the first place. It's spoken about as if it's a fact, something accepted by everyone. The sheer amount of hours wasted on false information is discouraging. I'm glad they talked about soil quality and soil degradation. This is the true concern that is relevant to the environment. If we pollute and destroy all of the soil and water we have access to, we can't raise quality animal and plant foods. I really don't like how the negative focus you know, of factory farming was related to the environment. You know, The meat, the food produced by any conventional agriculture is lacking the nutrition it's supposed to have. It's full of agrochemicals, and not only is it lacking nutrients, it has altered fatty acid ratios, making it inflammatory. You know, for them to talk about how negative feedlot and monocrops and that type of agriculture is for the environment, but not talk about how those feedlot animals are tortured, and not talk about how shitty the meat is, it kind of questions, you know, what are their motives? Do they want people to eat this shitty feedlot beef? To top it off, they said that factory farmed meat is mostly grass-fed which isn't further from the truth. If you math out the lifespan of a typical steer, a grass-fed animal gets seven times more pasture than a grain-fed animal. I'll link my The Life of a Feedlot Cow video at the end here. Most importantly, how can they talk about soybean oil and not mention that vegetable seed oils are straight poison? They are the most dangerous thing you can put in your body. And if you're going to tell me that Chris Kresser doesn't know this, I might as well give up right now. Literally the cause of most chronic diseases, especially heart disease, and they didn't even bring it up. To my surprise, they brought up the Seventh Day Adventist Church and their vegetarian beliefs, you know, their ties to the American Dietetic Association. Although they didn't link, you know, the American Heart Association and various 
scientific groups. Now, I wish they spoke about how Seventh-day Adventists have lower rates of heart disease, but higher rates of stroke because of poor homocysteine metabolism due to lack of vitamin B12. Chris acknowledged that epidemiological studies, you know, most studies done on nutrition are pretty faulty. Things like healthy user bias, and no emphasis on food quality in the studies. You know, they should have mentioned that most people are on a shitty standard American diet, the unhealthiest diet in the world in these studies. Uh, focusing on protein intake is not really important because if you follow a diet that gets all of the required nutrients you need, protein intake would inherently be met. Humans tend to overcomplicate things, isolating specifics and analyzing them, you know, when nature typically has a more reasonable answer. You know, the major focus of this podcast being animal protein versus plant protein is kind of a distraction. It's funny how Joe called strongman and bodybuilding steroid sports, and I hate to break it to you boys and girls, all sports are steroid sports. Every athlete at the top is using performance enhancing drugs. That level of competition, the amount of money and success that is on the line is unimaginable. You know, it's why I just do natural bodybuilding. You know, I don't play baseball anymore. I don't box anymore. I don't play any more sports because I'm not going to put myself in a situation up against someone that has an unnatural advantage. And if you actually understood how ridiculously strong, fast athletic steroids make you, it would be night and day. Joe brought up carnivores saying that they think their side is the only way to go. And I don't really think I'm lumped into that group in any way whatsoever. You know, I always talk about plant foods on my channel, mentioning the importance of them in things like feeding the gut microbiome, other hypothetical benefits. But most of these Cargill carnivores that jumped on the bandwagon are demonizing plant food, calling themselves leading experts on the carnivore diet after being on the carnivore diet for a year, shopping at Costco, you know, pushing feedlot beef, not being too scientific about everything. You know, something Chris said, which I always say as well, every group of indigenous people ate both plant and animal foods, the Inuit being a unique exception at certain parts of the year, although they still ate the contents of the animal stomach, which typically contained plant foods. Uh, debunking B12 in soil uh, was pretty much identical to my video I did about two weeks ago. I'm excited he mentioned that vegans can eat their own poop to get their B12 as I am still selling my carnivore doo-doo uh, for any vegans interested. Uh, homocysteine was actually brought up, but they didn't explain how dangerous and inflammatory high levels were long term. It's kind of funny how vegans always say, oh, Carnivores have all that iron in their colon. It's causing excess oxidative stress. Well, vegans have all that homocysteine in their blood, causing far more oxidative stress. Would you rather have a little extra iron in your colon or more oxidation happening in your actual blood vessels? Uh, the digestive system of humans versus herbivores was mentioned and explained incredibly well. In addition to the role of meat consumption throughout our evolution, you know, PETA is literally trying to rewrite history. You know, if you Google, like, are humans herbivores, PETA has articles saying that we're herbivores. It's kind of crazy. Uh, the most ridiculous thing said on this whole podcast was Chris mentioning that dietary saturated fat might not be necessary. Uh, this ties back to fat soluble vitamins we mentioned initially. You know, vitamin A, D3, K2, omega fatty acids are only found in foods that contain saturated fat. You know, right after that, Joe brought up raw milk. So these two definitely have information they aren't revealing too clearly to the audience. Even so, Joe literally said that if you're buying food from conventional agriculture, you are participating in destruction. I think this is a podcast that is set up for the more intelligent part of the audience that doesn't need things spelled out. Anyone who listens to this that does their own research is going to figure out the things they didn't mention in this podcast, you know, granted they're intelligent enough. It's a very clever way of them to maintain control of the population, slowly changing the conversation, switching to the hypothetical good side. So there are two scenarios. One, Chris Kresser isn't as smart as I thought he was, and as much as I would love to believe that, 
I think it's really just a matter of not giving too much information to the public on such a large platform. Uh, if you guys want to check out some of my videos relevant to this, uh, definitely watch my Game Changers critique. Uh, I did a Cam Newton video explaining the urea cycle and the Krebs cycle, you know, plant versus animal protein metabolism, as well as a video I did titled Meat Myths Debunked. Uh, if you guys could please, you know, I mean, tweet Joe Rogan, send him a message on Instagram. Uh, who knows? I think Frankie Boy, out of every single person, is the most researched and educated carnivore. I have sunk thousands and thousands of hours into just YouTube. I've been on the diet for seven years. There is no one that has put out more content in the context of the carnivore diet than myself. So thank you guys for joining me. If you could please like the video, subscribe, definitely hit that bell icon, share the video if you can. If you guys would like to support me further, check out Frankie's Free Range Meat, high quality nutrient dense animal foods at an affordable price. Uh, you can also check out Frankie's Naturals for minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. And if you'd like to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one health consultations to look like you are chiseled out of marble, uh, send me an email, frankatufano at gmail.com.